Now, when it comes to picking the right trail running shoe, it is a super personal thing. And I would always recommend going along to a running specialist store, popping in, having a chat with the guys in there, trying on as many different brands and models as you can. Unfortunately, this is getting harder and harder nowadays with a lot of those shops disappearing from the high street. So I thought we'd put together Run For Eventual's helpful guide on picking the right trail running shoe for you and your needs. So let's get stuck into the video. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is feeling well out there in YouTube world and thanks for joining us for another video. Now, as you can imagine, we get lots of comments, lots of messages, lots of emails from viewers who are new to trail running and they're asking that all important question of, you know, what trail shoes should they buy or what shoe's gonna work best for them? Now, this is a tricky, if not impossible question to answer, but over the years I have thought about it and I think there is some guidelines that you can follow when when it comes to sort of helping out to choose the trail shoe that's going to work best for you. Now when it comes down to buying a shoe online it can be a bit of a minefield and it's a bit like playing sort of running shoe roulette and we definitely need a fair bit of luck along the way to get it right. Now some of those websites are pretty helpful, they have quite a lot of information when it comes down to the, the fit or the length of the shoe, the width, uh, the heel offset, the level of cushioning or structure and the lug depth on the outsole and so on. But unfortunately, some of those websites are extremely vague when it comes to the sort of stats or the information on the shoe, which really isn't that helpful at all. I personally think the first thing you need to figure out is whether the brand or the model of trail shoe you're looking at is true to size. And it would definitely make everybody's life a lot easier if all the running brands got together with all their models of running shoe and made them exactly the same size. But that is definitely not the case. And a perfect example of this is, I normally run most of my running shoes in a UK 9.5. That tends to work really well for me. However, the Kalas Fuga EX2, I actually run in a UK 9 and it's my only shoe that is in that size, but it fits me perfectly well on length. However, when I run the Innovate Park Claw, I wear these in a UK 10.5. So I go up a full size and a half in this Innovate shoe and it fits me exactly the same as the UK 9 in the Kalas shoe. So you can see that between the brands, the sizing can be very different. Again, some of the websites out there are brilliant when it comes to sizing information and they'll let you know if the brand or the model of shoe you're looking at is true to size or whether it's better to go up or down half a size. Unfortunately, that information isn't always there. So I would recommend if it's not, maybe contact the brand, try and find out what the sizing is like or go onto a running forum or a YouTube channel like Run For Adventure and ask the question there and try and find out what the sizing's like before you make that all important purchase. Obviously, the best recommendation if you have a running specialist store near to you is pop in, go and chat to the guys in there, they'll be super knowledgeable and try lots of different models on. And that's gonna be a reoccurring theme in this video. The next thing to look for is the all important width in the toe box. Now again, this is super personal to each individual. Everybody's foot shape's different. Some people have a lot of width to their feet. Some people are very narrow or deep or shallow. So it really is personal. And then every shoe is cut differently. So there's gonna be different levels of volume and width in the toe box of each model and each brand. So lots of things to think of. Or you might just like a lot of wiggle room, or you could be running a long distance in the shoe, so you want lots of space to allow your feet to expand into. A very rough rule of thumb, if you do feel you need quite a bit of width and volume in your trail shoes, is that brands like Ultra, Topo Athletic, Brooks in some of their models like the Cascadia and some of the Innovate models will offer you good width in the toe box. So if I hold the Ultra shoe up, you can see we've got a very unique sort of foot shaped design, quite different from your conventional running shoe. So really good width across that forefoot. It's gonna give you plenty of space and cause no restrictions. Just a word of warning, all Ultra shoes are zero drop, so they don't come with a heel offset. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but a zero drop doesn't work for every runner. So just something to be aware of. However, if you're not a fan of the zero drop thing, then uh, the brand Topo Athletic 
actually make their shoes using a very similar foot shape design. So maybe not as wide as the Ultra shoes, but they're still gonna give you really good volume in the toe box. And most of their models tend to run off a three or five mil heel offset. So there's another good option when it comes to good width in a trail running shoe there. However, if you're like me and you find that a lot of trail shoes are too wide and you've got lots of sort of lateral and medial slippage within that upper, then there are certain brands that definitely work better for a narrower foot shape. One of them being Salomon, notoriously known for being quite a narrow fitting shoe in the toe and definitely at the midfoot. So again, if you feel you've got a narrow foot shape, gonna work well, gonna give you lots of lockdown. And then we've also got some certain models from Saucony, like the new Peregrine 13. Again, a very fitted shoe. I've got quite a narrow foot shape and this shoe fits me like a glove. And then last but not least, we've also got some models from Kalas. Obviously, this is just a small selection and there's lots of other brands that work well for a narrow foot shape. So I'll put a little list up here on the screen so you can check them out. Um, so if you have got a narrow foot shape and you're looking for that very fitted shoe, then these brands definitely work well. The next thing you need to think about when it comes to your trail running shoes is where are you gonna be running and what are the underfoot conditions gonna be like? Because obviously someone like myself running here in the UK in the depths of winter is gonna need a very differently designed trail running shoe compared to someone who's spending all their time on flat, hard, dry, compacted trails in a warmer climate. So if you're gonna be running in really wet, muddy conditions, then the most important thing is the lug pattern and the lug depth. Uh, a rule of thumb is you're probably gonna want at least five mil of depth on those lugs to give you good levels of traction and grit when you're out in those muddy conditions. So a perfect example of that is Innovate's X Talon Ultra 260 V2s. Uh, you can see it's actually seen quite a lot of muddy action because this is the shoe I always tend to use in those types of conditions. If I turn it over, the outsole's got this nice chunky lug on it. So that's gonna dig into the mud, give you great levels of traction. But you can see it's also very well spaced out. So it's not gonna hold onto that mud or clog up with mud and then start to get slippy over time. Obviously, if you're running on you know, hard, compacted dry trails, then this is probably a bit too aggressive. And something like the Kalas Fuga EX2 is probably gonna be better suited to those hard, compacted trails. So the lug pattern on the outsole is nowhere near as aggressive. So when you pick up those long sections of dry, firm trail, it's not gonna feel like you're running in a pair of football boots, but it's still gonna give you enough lug to give you traction on, say, any loose trail that you come across, or if you have a heavy downpour mid run and the trails turn a bit wet but it would struggle in really sort of muddy boggy conditions now i'm sure there's lots of people watching this video that think when they go out for a trail run they could come across every type of sort of trail and underfoot conditions there is and they kind of need the best of both worlds and i'd put myself in that boat because when i'm down here in cornwall especially in the winter i can go out for a short trail run and pretty much have every type of train you can think of and we can also get four seasons in one day. So a uh, very tricky thing for a trail running shoe to achieve because, you know, for a shoe to give you good levels of traction in muddy conditions and then good levels of grip on rock or wet rocky trails and a high level of comfort on those long sections of dry compact trail is quite hard to achieve with one pair of trail shoes. But there's definitely some models and some brands out there that do it a lot better than others. I'd say you'd be looking for a four to five mil lug depth on the outsole because this way it's gonna give you good levels of traction when you do pick up the muddy sections, but it's not gonna be overly aggressive when you have to run on long sections of dry firm trail or even sections of tarmac. When it comes to the rubber on the outsole, uh, some rubbers on trail shoes do perform better than others. And I would always say to look for this little yellow box on the bottom of the shoe. So this is a Vibram logo and they specialized in rubber compound. They make lots of different rubbers for work boots, hiking boots, uh, walking shoes, but I would always try and make sure that it is their Vibram Mega Grip that is coating your trail shoe. Some of their rubbers are definitely not as grippy on sort of wet rock as others where 
as this Vibram Mega Grip is super sticky and you're going to feel very confident underfoot with Vibram Mega Grip on the outsole. So if you are the type of runner that has to cross over a big mix of different terrains in changing weather conditions like I do, then I definitely recommend checking out Sockeney's Exodus Ultra. It really does handle the long stuff well, especially when you're crossing over to different types of trails or underfoot conditions. So definitely one to check out. Uh, also from Hoka, their very popular Speed Goat 5 does that job really well. And them are fatty Speed 4s. Recently been testing this shoe on the channel. We took it out for the long run test the other day. Ran over a big mix of different terrains and it performed really well. Great midsole, very comfortable, but very stable. And we've got that yellow box on the outsole again. So you're gonna get good levels of grip, but also good levels of traction with this nice chunky lug. Uh, also, very impressed, can't believe I'm saying this, with Nike's latest update to the Wild Horse, the Wild Horse 8. We are still waiting to do the long run test in it, but out on that first impressions run in some challenging conditions into Hiddy Woods, it performed really well. And it, it felt like a shoe that would handle a big mix of terrain extremely well, especially over long distance again. So definitely one to look out for. Obviously, this is just a small selection of the shoes on the market that will do that. So I'll pop up a few more on the screen here. So if you can only have one trail shoe and you need it to do a big varied job of running on different trails in different conditions, these shoes are definitely worth checking out. The next thing to discuss is cushioning. And again, it's a very personal thing when it comes to the depth of cushioning you wanna have in the midsole of your trail running shoe, because obviously you're gonna be running this shoe out on uneven ground and maybe technical trails. So a very different undertaking compared to say your road shoe that's only got to deal with flat, hard and repetitive surfaces. Again, this is an area of trail running shoes where there has to be a little bit of compromise. So to start with, you need to decide, are you willing to maybe lose a bit of ground feel for a slightly more comfortable, less stable ride of a deeply cushioned midsole? Or are you at the complete other end of the spectrum and you wanna strip that cushion out, lose a bit of comfort so you feel more connected, more planted to the trails underfoot. So you feel a bit more stable when you're moving at speed. There's obviously not a right or wrong way you just need to decide what works best for you. Obviously, if you just run on nice, flat, compact, hard trails, this probably isn't gonna be an issue, but if you do venture out onto some more technical trails, then it's definitely worth a thought because the deeper the cushioning under your foot in a trail shoe, the less connection and stability you have. However, there is a few shoes that still offer a plush ride and give you good ground connection. So first one is that favorite, the Exodus Ultra again. So I've run this on some very technical trails and I've always felt comfortable and connected in this shoe. We've got that Mafati uh, Speed 4 again. Like I said, out in that long run, I run on some technical sections and this has to be one of the most stable feeling, deeply cushioned trail shoes I've run in. This dual compound Profly midsole setup really does handle those uneven conditions very well. And we've also got Salomon's S-Lab Genesis, maybe not as cushioned as the Mafati's, but still offers a very comfortable plush ride without sacrificing any of that ground feel. At the other end of the scale, for those purists out there that want to strip it all back and they want to feel all the lumps and bumps through the midsole, uh, then shoes like Innovase X Talon Ultra 260 V2s will definitely give you that kind of running experience. There's actually more stripped back versions of this shoe as well, which will give you even more ground feel. Something a little bit different. So the Lone Peak uh, from Ultra, there is a bit more cushioning in this midsole, but whenever I've run this shoe in technical areas, I still feel very connected underfoot. And then we have the new uh, Peregrine 13 from Saucony. They've added cushioning this time around, but still feel really dialed in. All you want to do in this shoe is go out and attack technical trails and run fast. The previous version, the 12, had less cushion in it, so you feel even more connected in that shoe. So we've covered sizing, width, the type of trails and conditions that you're running in, and we've talked about the levels of cushioning when it comes to the midsole. So all that really leaves is weight. Now, like road shoes, trail shoes come in lots of different weights, from the pretty lightweight new Peregrine 13, all the way up to the Goliath that is Innovate's Trailfly Ultra G 300 Max. And believe it or not, this shoe weighs almost 100 grams more than that 
Peregrine 13. Weight is super important to some runners out there and it's the first thing they sort of analyze when they're thinking of buying a new shoe. And if it isn't under a certain weight, then they're not interested, you know? They want to run in pretty stripped back shoes to give them that sort of natural feel. And then other runners really don't care. It doesn't matter. And I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't want a heavy shoe. I don't need a super uber stripped back light shoe either. Uh, especially if I'm going to head out for a longer training run or a race, then I'm willing to sacrifice 30 or 40 grams in a shoe's weight if it's going to keep me comfortable over that distance. I would say a good way to measure it if you're unsure is get your road shoes, stick them on the scales, see how much they weigh. And if you're comfortable running in that shoe and it feels good to you, then I would try and replicate that when it comes to your new trail shoe. So there you have it, folks. Run for Adventures guide to picking the right pair of trail running shoes for you when it comes to the type of terrain and conditions that you're running in. Unfortunately, with a lot of the bricks and mortar running store specialists sort of disappearing, more and more people are having to buy their running shoes online. So really hope this has helped clear a few things up. It's given you a few tips of what to look for when you're in that minefield of buying shoes online. Uh, don't forget, if you have found it helpful, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do and it is completely free just by clicking on that little red box down there in the corner. While you're there, don't forget to hit that bell icon because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content. But for now guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel, it's really appreciated. We'll be back here very soon and as always, stay safe and keep on running. Hope everybody is fit and well out there in YouTube world and thanks for joining us for another video. Now you can imagine, uh, we get answered, answered. I kind of need the best of both worlds and you know, I'm in that boat when I come for a run, when I'm feeling what trail running shoes should they buy or what shoes gonna work best for them? Now, this is a pretty tricky, if not tri tricky, pretty twicky.